that's what I like. We've got a small crowd today, but good energy. I like it. I like it. Everybody have a good holiday? Awesome. Yes. All right. Are we ready to have 2013 as our best year ever? Yes. yes. Ready for that? So to do, have a, does anybody want the same results as last year? I better check I know. No. <laughs> okay, good. I'm just checking. So what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing all over and over expecting different results. All right, so we're going to just totally different this year. Is that all right? All right? Okay. Um, did anybody attend Todd's screen? Let's see him speak yesterday at the board. Okay, good. Oh, I missed it. Well, I found out he did the same exercise I'm going to do today, so I was worried if a bunch of you went, it's going to be a little bit repetitious for you. So. Oh, I do. <laughs> very good, very good. What's that? Who's Todd? Todd Scream, our president. Oh, no. Sorry. What we're going to cover today is the core model. It's what they do for some goal settings. Uh, goal setting. It's very, 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 very cool. Um, did everybody get their business plan done? Yeah. If you have it, go spend a little time to get it done. If you notice the CDs we have here, you notice how impressive these labels are? They're not labels, they're actually it's called LightScribe. It's a, it's a thing called a duplicator. It cost me $500. But it, it copies the data and it engraves the CD at the same time, so I don't do those stupid labels which took me forever. Nice. So I thought this was a huge thing. So I got it, and when I got it, I was too busy. I was running around like a chick with my head cut off. So then when it came time to cut uh, these CDs, I opened the box, or no, I already opened the box. I got it all ready to go, and I lost the instructions. <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm a pretty tax savvy guy. This can't be that hard. You're copying CD, right? So I spent about two hours on it, and now I'm getting frustrated, screaming, yelling, crying, the whole nine yards. And I call tech support, and they're not open, right? And then I go online, and I print the online report on and try to download the software. So I just, it was, I ended up making it work, but I mean, the frustration was a no end to me. And I'm thinking, not having the instructions is probably like not having a business plan as a salesperson, right? I mean, it really kind of hit home for me. you got to put your plan together and then follow it. So it just, it just hit me over the head. I mean, so if you guys haven't done your business plan, even a loose one, I would get that done. Know what you're going to do because things will get crazy in our business. And then we can just look back. Like, literally, my calendar is full every day with recurring settings, so I know what to do. Because I get knocked off track. Because all of a sudden, I find out it was a 90-day flip, and we're two weeks into contract. By the way, can you guys tell me that earlier if you know that when you guys do a deal? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So today we're going to cover goals. And we're going to talk about that. And it's a little bit different. It's the core version. I'd like to ask, we're going to do a little work today. Is everybody okay with that? Is it okay if we all get a little, no, let's just put this. Can we all raise our hand that oh, there will be no judgments today on what's said in here no matter what? Can we all agree to that? No. No judgments. No okay, everybody but one. I feel so judged by you. Um, we're going to talk about goals. You said no judgments, but no, um, how about no, uh, I lost the word. We're judging you right now. <laughs> Yeah. Hold grudges, that's what I was going to No grudges, no grudges. No grudges? Oh, grass. We're going to go over the goal side of things. Um, we've got a CD here, and this is Dr. Nurse for Realtors. You guys know what Dr. Nurse, what he's talking about? No. So, I mean, real quick, Todd Scream, our president, was something funny. He's at about 450 employees right now. I remember when he was three or four. I mean, the guy's just an amazing genius, and he's able to see things in a visionary type of fashion. So he came up with a term called Dr. Nurse. And what he relates that to is, um, obviously we're in the flu season, so if you want to see your doctor, what happens? You hopefully you'll get an appointment with the doctor. And what's the first thing that happens when you go to your doctor's office? Who do you see? No, you don't see the nurse. It's the receptionist. You see the receptionist. She's going to collect your copay. She's going to make sure your address is correct. Make you fill out a new form, even though you just filled it out six months ago. Nothing's changed. All that stuff, right? So then you get back out. So then who do you see? The nurse. The nurse. Yeah, the nurse or the assistant of the nurse. And what does she do? Your blood pressure. Blood pressure, your weight, do that. Then you go to the room and then they ask you a bunch of questions, right? How you feeling while you're here today? And then who do you see? The doctor. The doctor. The doctor. And he Real comes short. He comes in for a good two or three minutes, diagnoses the problem, gives you a prescription, and then he's gone. And then who do you see? Pharmacist. 
Well, there was, you're going to go back to the receptionist if you need a follow appointment, and then you go see the pharmacist. Okay, tell your money. The, the point to this is, if you guys look at you as realtors, what do you do for the whole process? Everything. Everything. That's not a really good, efficient model. Now, if you're brand new in the business, you've got you to learn everything, right? But if you've been doing this for 20 years, do you really need to make the open house flyer or do, input the MLS form for the property address? You know what I mean? There's a lot of that. And it, it makes, the doctor gets better at his job because of that. He's got more time. All right? So these are two realtors from the core coaching talking, uh, very high producing realtors, and they're sharing all their systems for hiring people, for measurement standards, what do you pay them. Um, even if you don't want an assistant, you can still listen to some of their job functions and take them on yourselves. It's a great, great CD from real estate agents. All right? Any questions on that? No, thank you. It's cool, cool stuff. So enjoy that. Um, I've got my high-speed duplicator now, so we should have, I should have more and more of these. I'm going to be doing a bunch of these. I love these. So I encourage you guys, listen to them in your car all the time. Some of them I listen to three or four times, because these people are a lot smarter than me, and I want to shorten my learning curve. Sound good? All right. So we're going to work on some goals today, and usually we're covering tactics, right? How to do things, specifically systems, which is my favorite thing. But to me, if our head's not screwed on right, and we don't look at the prize or what, why we're kind of really here, the tactics aren't worth anything. Like Gary Keller in his book, The, the Realtor Millionaire, you know, I bought that book because uh, it said how to make a million dollars as a realtor. I want to learn the system. Well, the first two-thirds is about what? Do you guys know? It's about your big why. I'm like, where's the numbers? How many calls do I need? Now, that's the back third. I almost quit the book a couple times. But the first two-thirds is the big why, which I think is important. Why are you selling real estate? Why do you do this? Right? I struggle, I'll tell you myself, I struggle with, you know, I'm Chris Stahl, the loan officer. That's really not who I am if we're going to go bigger picture, right? I'm, my, I'm a father, you know what I mean? I'm, those are the, the kind of the big things who I am. So when I get these goals correct that we look at today, which is an amazing, it's the best goal setting exercise I've ever seen. We're going to cover different areas of your life. So we're going to get into that. So it's okay to be a little woo-woo today. I call it woo-woo. A little deep. All right, good. Everybody's bought it. All right, so if you look at your handout, everybody have a pen? Raise your hand if you don't. I don't. I have one. I remember, I'm sorry. Anybody have an extra pen? I apologize. Mark, will you grab the reception? Sorry. You should have a couple, three pens or at least some. So I want you to go to the page. Where are you now? Okay? All right, I need everybody to stay with me here. Where are you now? We're going to cover seven areas of your life, okay? So when you look at the first box, these are your boxes of your life. When you think of your money situation, what are two frustrations you have around money? If you've got all the money in the bank, just put none and you're independently wealthy. Just put zero and you're good, all right? But do you have any frustrations like... Uh, too much credit card debt. Uh, I don't have a cushion of savings in the bank. I don't make enough. Um, to really, just what are some frustrations you have about money? I'm not going to ask. You don't have to share these. If some of you want to share, that's fine. But I'm not going to ask you to share these. You can cover it up so your neighbor doesn't see it. Um, I've been doing this specific exercise. Thank you, Mark. Let me get my glasses on. Get your glasses on. <laughs> I've been doing this exercise for over 10 years. I do it every year. I'm telling you, I learn something huge every every single year. So what's the frustration you have around money? Not enough. Not enough. Don't have a retirement. Whatever it may be. Now to the right of that, I want you to rank it, this area of your life, 1 to 10. Okay? 10 being. 10 being, um, it's the best it's ever been. I don't really think there's 10s because I think you can always get better. So... If it's just phenomenal, you've got a million dollars in the bank, you're only here because for the fun of it, you like to meet people and hang around people, then I'd probably put like an eight or a nine. I'm looking for that first of your other. I want a million. If you're having trouble worrying about making your mortgage payment, you're probably like a one or a two. All right? So somewhere in there, rank it between one and ten. Okay. Now let's talk about your work. 
Okay. So now we're going to talk about your work life. Okay. What are some frustrations you may have around your work life? Working too many hours? Clients don't listen to you? Um, don't like my farm area, my sales price? No inventory. What's that? No inventory. No inventory? Yeah, I'm frustrated with work. I can't find any houses to sell. Or for my buyers. So put some frustrations there and then rank that 1 to 10. 10 being it's phenomenally perfect, 1 being it's horrible. Oh, I'm telling you, this is good stuff. <laughs> okay, your next box is yourself. All right? Think of yourself. What are some frustrations you have around yourself? Okay? I have my cholesterol levels too high. Very frustrating for me. I need to fix that. Okay. I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> I, take, I don't have enough personal time. I've discovered I need some me time, some personal time. Nobody around me. That's a frustration I have with myself. i got to get in shape. I'm doing a basketball league. It starts Wednesday, and I'm scared to death. I'm worried I'm going to drop that heart attack right there on the floor. <laughs> Luckily, it's half court. So. But yourself. So put some frustrations around there. And then rank it 1 to 10. <laughs> Next category is friends. Okay? Another area of your life. How's your friend situation? Are you frustrated that you don't spend enough time with them? Maybe a frustration is you don't have any? <laughs> <laughs> But when you think of friends, <coughs> what comes to mind? They're all dying. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one before. So maybe you need some new friends, so <laughs> younger friends. So that technology, the internet. There's lots of people looking for friends out there. Oh god. We are talking about them all week. Facebook and matchmatch.com. Yes. Gotta lower your expectations. Okay, rate your friend line from 1 to 10. Okay? 1, you have no friends. I gotta tell you with a friend, I got a high school buddy that we had a misunderstanding and I'm still holding it. I'm holding a grudge. Somebody brought that up. It's been like four months over a stupid little thing. I'm gonna have to call him and just make up with him. Stupid. Go ahead. I have the best line for that. Whoever thinks they're in the right the most should make the first call. Whoever thinks they're in the right, well, let's see, he should. No, I should. Are you, it's not fair. I don't are like you that. Right? Are you right? You have to I don't know if anyone else is using uh, meetup.com, but it's uh, any type of group. Uh, you can play chess, it can be French club. It, I joined a soccer, a couple pickup games, and met another dozen people. That's way cool. We use it. Um, it's for any activity. If you fly fish, if you want to go hiking. Meetup what? Meetup.com. I don't think and it's bigger in LA and the Bay Area. But it's, it's not a dating service. No, it's just any new activity yeah. groups. Okay, next box. Let's talk about family. Alright? Family. Any frustrations around family? I don't see my parents enough. They live in Arizona. It's not that far of a trip. I need to go over there more. Okay? What are frustrations you have around family? Rank the family box from a 1 to 10. 10 being your relationship with all your family is great. 1 being yeah, it's not so great. Okay, next box. Everybody's favorite. Your love life. What's that? Anything. That could be a frustration. Let's explain that it's not. If you don't have one. I mean, for God's sakes, what do you do after being married for 60 years? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> any frustrations around love life? Maybe you don't have any, and it's a 10. Okay? Maybe you do have some. List them there, and then rank it 1 to 10 for your love life. Uh, 
spice in your life. And, and the groans and moans go out. Why? You need a new husband. Oh my God. Maybe we should say a spare husband. Maybe a spare one. Last box is spirituality. Please do not get hung up on this. If it's church to you, that's fine. It's a church. It's a God. It's whoever. For some people, it's nature. Okay? For some people, it's meditating. It's Buddha. For the spirituality portion of your life, do you have any frustrations? Okay? Like, for me, I don't go to church as often as I should. It's frustrating. i gotta, I got to fix that. i got to set up a system for that. Okay. Set your alarm clock. <laughs> yeah. Schedule it in. I know what needs to happen. I'm not doing it. I just gave you a suggestion. So spirituality, right that area of your life. No judgment here. No judgment here. Um, and then put one to ten um, how happy you are, frustrated you are with your spirituality. And then I want you to add a box. I added this one myself because I think it's huge. Just scribble down where it says your biggest frustration overall. Add a box and put, and the category is fun. Do you have any frustrations around having fun? Yeah. Okay? What are they? You don't have enough of it. They did a, I did a, a talk once that said, I can't remember, the, the kids under 10 laugh an average of like 355 times per day. And by the time they get to like 25, it drops to like 6. I mean, it's just crazy. So... Remember, so from a fun standpoint, any frustrations, and then rank that on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being you have fun every day, you're laughing your butt off. A 1 being you're not laughing at all, you're sober in a bad mood. Well, you don't have to be high to be happy. No, whatever, whatever the fun is to you. Whatever the fun is to you. Now, write down your biggest frustration. Write down your biggest frustration overall at the bottom. Again, you do not have to share it. So when you think about goals, and the first time I saw this, I thought it was interesting. This exercise covers money, your work life, yourself, your friends, your family, your love life, your spirituality, and fun. If you have all of those, I think it would be a pretty balanced life. Now, let's go to page two. This is called your wheel of life. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take the numbers that you assign for each category on page one, and you're going to graph it on here. So, for example, for money, let's say you ranked it a seven. You'd go to the seven, you'd go to the money arrow, and put a big dot, like connect the dots. Does that make sense? So I need you guys to rank and graph every numeric value you gave for each area of your life. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Really important that everybody does this. So do you, can you do an example? Just put a dot, yeah. Like right here, see this? One, two, three. Yeah, so, so on the money one? On top of that black arrow? Yeah. So if this is money... And you ranked it a seven, you go around and you just put a big dot right there on that spoke. And you're going to rank all the spokes with a dot. Each spoke will have a dot on it to the number that you assign to it. <laughs> Any questions? Let me know when everybody gets their dots on it. We're not going to add up the scores or anything like that. No, I just want. Here's the number for suicide prevention. Everybody have their dashes there for their dots? No. 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 Okay. If you need help, let me know. <clears throat> 
person. <laughs> For the most part. I'm giddy, I'm excited, sorry. It's good stuff. It's easy, Lynn. It's all ones. It's just been... If it's all ones, yeah. <laughs> There's one like good and ten is. One bad. is bad, ten is great. Okay, good. Hmm. <laughs> one is bad? One is bad. It was a frustration meter. Oh, yeah. So if you put a 10 on there, or... No, no, no. Yeah, one is back. Do we attach the dots? Are right, we ready? Yeah. Who said that? Connect the dots. Let's connect the dots now, just like you did when you were 7. Or 5, or 3, or 15, whatever you mean. Mark, you don't need a straight edge, okay? You can freehand it there. I can't. Engineering type. <laughs> I got. I got to do it right. Connect the dots, and this is going to be called your wheel of life. Oh boy. Okay. Now, what's our goal? Our goal is a big, full, well-rounded wheel. So does yours look like that, or is it more like a Flintstones? You got a flat tire? What are we looking at? I got a star. <laughs> A big honking nail in mine. Uh -oh. Do we have some flat tires out there? <laughs> Mine's like a ninja throwing star. <laughs> now, when you think about this exercise, write down your biggest aha at the bottom. What was your biggest aha? I'm not having any fun. It's a big deal, sir. That may be your biggest oh, yeah. aha. <laughs> I had one of my ahas, one of the times I did this, was how much money affects the other areas. Oh. Even though maybe it shouldn't, it did for me. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, they're all kind of, your, your aha is going to be your own. But when I did it, actually, every time I do this, I get another big aha. It's like, oh, and it changes year to year, let's be honest. Like this, uh, two, 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 three, three. Is there any brave souls in here that want to share their biggest aha? I just did, not having any fun. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Need more money. Need more money? Need to get more money enables other things. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? When yes. I've done an exercise similar to this. Uh -huh. But it wasn't brought out into the fact that what is your biggest frustrations. Mm -hmm. And so when you put it that way, things are different than the way I've done before. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you look at it a different way, yeah. things are not yep. Well, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, now comes the good part. So <laughs> what we're going to do next is going to be page three. We're going to work on two new goals for this area now that you know what your frustrations are. Okay? But before we do that, we're going to do what I call smart sack. And I know we've all done goal setting exercise, so I get this. But this is a nice uh, reminder of a way to do it. Anybody need text let me know. Okay, when you set goals, it's important that they follow a certain format, all right? For example, I want to lose weight. That's a generic goal. Uh, the less specific you are, the less likely it's going to happen. Does that make sense? So here's the acronym SMART SAC. It was SMART and then we added the SAC to it. To remember this when you're setting your goals, okay? It needs to be specific. Yep. You guys got it up there? Everybody have it? Needs to be specific, okay? Not generic. I want to weigh 135 pounds, 195 pounds, whatever. It's a specific number. It needs to be measurable, okay? I'm going to add 10 contacts a week to my database. I can measure that. I can come back at the end of the week to Mark and say, hey, Mark, did you meet your goal? Yep, I added 10. He didn't just say I want to add a bunch of names to my database. 
that needs to be achievable. Okay? I played tennis in college. I'm very good. I will never be a professional tennis player. It's not achievable, so it's not going to happen. Okay? So make your goal realistic. If you made 50 grand this year, don't put your goals 150 grand next year. Chances are you're not going to go up 300% in your income. Does that make sense? So make it achievable. Make it realistic. Okay? Kind of the same format there. It's got to be a realistic type of goal. All right? Chris, could we do achievable but stretch it a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Oh, no. And remember, you can, you can exceed your goal. You can go above your goals. I just, a lot of times, I used to set really high goals and I'd fall short every year. I did really well, but I felt like a failure because I didn't make my goals. So, income-wise, the core, uh, things like that, they don't like to, they actually, they won't let you set your goal more than 20%. If you go up 20% a year, they figure that's pretty good. Okay? But it, there's little changes in there. Um, time frame, has to have a time frame. By what date? Satisfying. This is a biggie, guys. Make sure it's satisfying something fun you want to do. Um, I went to a Mike Ferry seminar a million years ago, and he taught me to call expired listings, and he promised me 200000 a year if I did 30 expired listings a day. Okay? I wanted to kill myself. I, I'm not good at it. I don't like calling expired listings. It's not for me. Some people do it. They're very successful. That's fine. I'm not. That's not me. So make sure your goal that you want to do is satisfying. <laughs> Accountability, the A. This is probably one of the biggest. We all, I'm sorry, we all need accountability. We all need a coach. Why do famous athletes have coaches? They're like the best in the world, right? I mean, it's crazy. Michael Jordan, he always had a coach, personal coach, personal trainer. Those guys all have. So we need, for you guys, if it doesn't have to be something fancy, meet, meet a buddy for coffee every Monday or something like that. Do not, is nobody, I can't remember who it was. Oh, he's not in here. This guy came to me and goes, yeah, I got my girlfriend's my accountability partner. Bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Don't have your, I tried it once too. Don't have your spouse or anything like that be your accountability partner. I don't suggest it. Get somebody else. Okay. But maybe she was better than his wife. Maybe. <laughs> C stands for celebration. You have to reward yourself. Do we have the opportunity to make a ton of money in this business? Yeah. When we do, go out and celebrate something you want. I'll never forget my goal a long, long time ago was to make $10,000 in a month. And I was just pushing and pushing. And then when I hit it, I went to the Wilson's Leather Store in the Art Fair Mall. They used to be over there. And I bought myself like a $350 leather briefcase. I always wanted like the real leather kind. Oh, that was just, I was wanted that so bad. So make a, make something fun when you achieve uh, when you achieve the goal to celebrate. Okay. Also, feel free to use little celebrations, like I talk about lead tracker and greatness tracker. Or um, I used to reward myself with a mocha when I got my database mailer out. I'm gonna get a mocha because I usually don't drink those. You know, they taste good. So it can be a little good thing, but kind of trick yourself. All right. Any questions on the goals? Remember this format for what we're gonna do right now. Where will you be December 2013? Okay? We're going to go through each area. What are two goals for your work? Okay? Guys, I'm telling you, there's a power that comes over when you write stuff down. I can't explain it. It's an intangible thing somewhere out there in the universe. When you write something down, it's more likely to happen. Okay? It like kinesthetically goes in your brain, I think, because you're actually physically writing it. So for your work, what are some goals? I want to work 40 hours or less a week. Okay, it's not your money. These are work goals. I want to work with only sellers in 2013. I want to close 15 transactions. I want to hire an assistant. I want to hire a buyer's agent. What are some goals you have around your work? For you guys in Connect, I want to bring three or four more people on my team. I want to bring five. You can change these for now. Just write the first thing that comes to your mind. I literally did this exercise three times in the month of December for myself. Just so I got crystal, crystal clear with them. All right, two goals for your work. Okay, 
Let's talk about money. What are two goals around money? And don't be a uh, fasty and drive, go do it more real quick. Stay with me on each of these. What are two goals for your money? Budget. What's that? Budget. Budget? Now hear that budget though? It's too big. It's got to be specific. It's got to be measurable. So I will complete a budget by the fifth of every month. Oh, I see. I think that's a great goal. The core teaches that. Budget's a great goal. I will save three months of my expenses in an account for a slow time. I'm at the age now I really want less stress in my life. And if I have like six months living expenses in the bank, I have less stress in my life. And I'm a better father. I'm just going to tell you that. I'm a better friend. I mean, money does matter a little bit on things like that. That's okay. You know, that's a good goal to have some, some survival number in case you don't close a deal in a month or two. You know, we're in a weird business. Yeah, a realtor, I, got, I got realtors like last year, a lady, she made like no money for four months and then had like a $45,000 month. You know what I mean? I, it's just crazy. We're in that business. Uh, money could be to pay off a certain amount of debt. Okay? Reduce my credit card debt by 5000 this year. Pay off a credit card. There's no judgments to these goals. These are your personal goals. Wow. The foxes are running. No, but I Release the hounds. Why do why do people work with you? They like you. Okay, we're all clear on that, right? So this next one is love life. If you're a happier person, people will sense it. You'll make more money. Okay. So what are two good goals around your love life? All right. I'm going to share some of them that I've learned. Date night. Yeah, that's it. Have a date night at least well, once a week with your spouse, significant other. Once a week. That's Have a date night. Okay. No, they're not. It's tough when they're younger. It's tough. If maybe it's only twice a month for you, I'm telling you, I, I'm very passionate about this. I did. Get, I was married for 20 years and got divorced, and I think part of it was we didn't spend enough time together as a couple. We could have dropped the kids off at grandma's or the neighbors across the street or something like that, but I was too busy being Mr. Worker Bee. Okay? We'll worry about that later. And then when we did have date night, it was a pain in the butt. Oh, yeah, I'll get home in time for, okay, what are we doing tonight, honey? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? That's real enthusiastic. So here's how we do it. One week, you're responsible for it. One week, your spouse is responsible for it. No questions asked. That way, it's all decided up front. If you don't have money, it can be a walk by the river as date night. You don't have to spend money. You don't have to go to a big fancy dinner. Okay? Do that stuff you always think you should do. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion. Yes. Um, find something good you see in the other person you're living with and mention it. There you go. Now. You find to see something that they do that you appreciate it um, and say something about it. Very good. Thank you. On mine this year is to review with my girlfriend, we're going through chapter by chapter, the five love languages. You guys heard of that book? Yeah, I hate that. Not that I need help communicating or anything with my significant other. I mean, I'm perfect at it, right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Sometimes I can't believe the stuff that comes out of my mouth. I'm like, going, did I really say that? <laughs> Another good book is um, Love and Respect. Love and Respect? Yes, the guys want respect, the women want love. There was a John, what was the John Gray's book? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. That was a good one. So, put whatever you want on here. A day night, maybe it's a quarterly, a uh, three day weekend, three times in a year. You're going to go away for a weekend. Okay? Whatever you want in your love life. Again, I'm, I'm kind of cheating on you here. If you're kind of happier and you have a good well and you're happy in all these areas, you're going to be a better realtor. I'm sorry, you will be. You'll be happier. People want to hang around you. You're a better realtor, you'll make more money, and then these get even better as it goes, because now you have more money to deal with. Or, uh, you know, um, I, this was interesting, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Do this exercise with your significant other. Okay? Do this exercise with your significant other. It's amazing to me. Again, I'm doing all this. I just did this with my girlfriend. You know what her biggest frustration was? Uh, her income's down right now, and she can't give enough money away. She's used to tithing and doing a bunch of giving. And she can't give anymore right now because she's having a down, she's self-employed. That was very frustrating for her. I thought that was interesting. It's different for everybody. Okay? But we need to be happy, and this is part of being happy, spending some time on these goals. 
All right, that's why we're forcing you here. We all say we're going to do goals, and a lot of times we never do. So we're taking the time right now to complete them. All right, any questions on love life? Okay. Family. What are some goals around family? I'm going to see my folks at least four times this year. I wrote it down. Four times. Is that measurable? Yep. Specific? Yep. Skype? I'm just kidding. What did you say? Skype. 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 No. Yeah. He's right. I continue. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, i got to revise it now. I'm going to physically drive to see my yeah. folks at least four times this year. Good call, Mark. The more specific you are, the more likely it is to get done. Right? Wake your folks like. Arizona no store. <laughs> the nine and a half hour no, drive. Uh, my in laws lived around the block, and we didn't. There were years we didn't go see them very often. I always envied a guy named John Stassi. He was one of my old bosses. They were a big Sicilian family. Every Sunday, everybody came over to this guy's house. Every Sunday. I tried to implement that a couple times. It just didn't work. But I love that idea. Everybody gets together. Maybe once a month, you have a breakfast at your house. Uh, other things on family. Um, I will tell you with my kids, I have date night. Once a month, I have two kids, and I do just one. Because when they're both together, I still can't figure out what happens. But individually, they're sweet little innocent kids. You put them both <laughs> together, and they're just like, they're 12 and 14, hormones are raging. So I have a date night once a month with my kid. Okay? Two goals for family. Spirituality. This, these, all, these fields are all important. Okay? Some sense of spirituality, whatever it may be for you. Mine this year is to find a church home. We've been bouncing around churches. I've got to find a church home. Okay? It may not be church for you. It may be to go for a walk in nature twice a week. It may be to meditate every day for 30 days, or every day for 30 minutes. It's <laughs> up to you guys. Every day for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> not much time left, is there? <laughs> no, not right now. Um, friends. Okay, what are two goals around friends? All right, I schedule the quarterly guys night. Okay, we go to dinner and the movies, we get seven or eight guys together. It's so much fun. I never do that anymore. Too busy working. If I don't schedule it, put it in the calendar, it will not happen. It's like a vacation. Yeah, we should go on vacation. We should go on vacation. Oh, another year went by. But if I put it on the calendar, it happens. Uh, another one is... Uh, Call at least five friends a week from my phone. Put your best friends in your speed dial on your cell phone. Put your Bluetooth on. Call them on the way home. And then literally, I do this. It's fun. I call some friends and I say, hey, just thinking about you. How are you doing? What are you up to? Yeah, I got a buddy from fifth grade. I could not talk to him for years. I talked to him. It's like I saw him yesterday. You know what I mean? Those kind of relationships, those things are important. Or if you need to make new friends, put a new friend list and call them. Okay, some goals around yourself. Whew, I struggle with taking care. I put myself last on the list a lot of times. I can't do that. It's like the airplane thing when the oxygen mask come down. You've got to put it on you first. Then you can take care of your kids and everybody else. <clears throat> what do you need for yourself? I, got, I want to play, take guitar lessons this year. Okay? I don't really want to take the time to do that, but it's fun to do, and I've always wanted to do that. All right? I'm going to exercise at least three times a week for 30 minutes doing cardiovascular. Is that specific? Is it measurable? Yes. Don't put, I want to get in better shape. Don't do that. <laughs> Set yourself up with a bucket list. I can tell you to do it anyway. Yep, same thing. Same thing. What are you going to do for yourself? Could be a vacation. Could be a cooking class. You know, we work hard as realtors, and I think it's stressful. And we have escrows for the most part. Especially now, there's more problems than there seems like than there ever has for my 22 years in the business. There's a lot of problems, a lot of stress. We need to blow off some stress. We need a release. Okay? Get a healthy release. Put it down here, something you want to do. Maybe it's guys' poker night. I would like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was very sexist of me. You know what? It's poker night. She liked it, though. Night. You want it for him or for you? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> for him? Okay, last one. Fun. What's two goals to have more fun in 2013? Fun. What's that? Let's see, that's too generic. We have to do something else. Go to a funny movie once a month, once a week? Read a joke book? 
Oh, there's some funny movies out there. I'm telling you right now, I gave one of my favorite realtors two tickets to Laughs Unlimited, and she still didn't use them. Because I told I coach her, I told her she's too serious. Some of the homework I give her, she has to bring me a joke. Okay? I do that to some of my coaching students. You gotta tell me a joke. You get too serious. Have fun. Lighten up. Watch the people, video. Watch huh? the video last night of this guy. He made a this um pretend seat cover. And he got behind it, and he drove up to a drive-up window, food fast food window, because he ordered back the other one. And when he drived up, they're like, he, they didn't see him. He had his hands down like this, you know. And it was this car seat, and they're like, <laughs> and he goes, I'm a ghost. Throw it in here. <laughs> and the looks on their face. It was, I was laughing for 30 minutes. You know, I was on the Today Show this morning as well as Facebook. Both of them. Oh, hey. Dude, have fun. I'm telling you, I've had people over and we go on YouTube and just type in funny sentences yeah. and crazy stuff comes up. You gotta be careful if your kids are there, but I mean, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> so put some things for fun, okay? Now we have all of these here. What's your most important goal to focus on? What's the number? If nothing else happens in 2013, I'm gonna achieve this one goal. <coughs> write that one down. Unseparable mind on different areas. It says get out of the house. So I think that's it. <laughs> Is that specific? Is it measurable? <laughs> so here's what I want you guys to do, real quick. I want you to break in groups of two to three. Okay, we're going to do a little table work. And I want you to share a goal you're comfortable with. I won't force it. Anyone you want. And I want you to ask the group, preferably your most important one, is it specific? Is it measurable? Does it meet our criteria here? Okay, we're only going to do this just for a couple of minutes, groups of two or three. Person with the shortest hair goes first. All right?
Actually, she had a health scare, I think, is what prompted it. But she goes, something along the lines, if this is Saturday, I won't be returning your call today, um, but I'll return all calls the following day. She has it on her voicemail. It's one day week. I can't remember what it was, that she's not going to return your call. People respect that. You may lose some deals. You probably will lose some deals. You can put a system in place to say, hey, it's Saturday. I don't work today, but call my awesome partner, Mark. He'll be able to take care of you. Put something together, but we deserve one day off a week. At least. Yes. Okay, what else? These are great ones. I'm learning now. Hi. Yes? Um, I've been trying to time manage and time block for about 10 years now. So, <laughs> You're not alone. Um, mine is, to, well, I was trying to think, how do I do that? And it say at least to sit down once a week and block off the week. Okay. And add to it if I need to, but at least that's a start. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great start. You may want to include which day of the week you're going to do that. Oh, no, because I don't have to do it. <laughs> One of the biggest changes for me has been to put recurring settings in Outlook. And they all go to your smartphone now. So it's, if when I follow that, I have a better, more balanced life. I'm just going to sound crazy. The more I put into my schedule, the more free time I have. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a weird concept. Mm -hmm. And you can schedule in goof off time. I do that. Covey says to be careful not to schedule more than half of your time because yeah. it, other things will fill. Will fill but up. you can move them. Yeah. But leave a little margin, in other words. Like, I, I end up with no margin sometimes because I've scheduled everything and then other stuff happens and just nothing left, you know. But it's yeah. Other ones. These are good ones. You guys are, when you guys share, you're teaching everybody and helping. Yeah. Get back into a small group. Okay. In, in church, we used to have small groups and connecting groups, and I've, the last year I haven't. Okay. One, so. so by when will you do that? Um, they're starting up in the next two weeks. So okay, cool. Within the next two weeks. So by the month, yeah, next two weeks, somebody needs to belong to a small group. Phenomenal. Betty, do you have one? Get my home office organized so I can spend more time in it. Beautiful. By when? Be crazy. When? Oh, you're not alone. <laughs> Look at that. See that? It looks like now you know I got to do it. Uh, spend a half an hour a day. One hour a day. For how long? Until it's done. For, okay, tell us that. Okay. Betty's going to spend an hour a day. Now, if she wanted to take it a step further, she could say between 8 and 9. Or 7 and 8. If she wanted to really take it specific. Or take a whole Saturday. Whatever works for you. Yeah, I wrote one thing down. I said to take. Uh, oh, sorry. I want to do six road trips this year. Just find something within about a hundred mile radius. Six to just go to six different places. I haven't. There's a great book. It's uh, uh, Sacramento Road Trips. Huh. Oh. Okay. And then go to REI and then Sacramento and look at it. it. Gives you all these little trips. They're like I don't know where away. That's, that's awesome. That's a tool. I don't know. I have a bunch of people writing that down, by the way. Yeah, very cool. Road trip. That's fun, isn't it? What happens when you go on a road trip Sunday and then you're back in the office on Monday? You're all, man, that was great. You're talking to clients. I had the best time last weekend. And I'm just, you get more business. You'll make more money. Like, you make more money getting happier. So why not spend some time to get happier? Yeah. We started going to missions, California missions, yeah. last year on a way home from a week vacation. We stopped at three. This last, um, a week ago, we went to uh, almost to L.A., mm -hmm. and we stopped at one there. So we've got four. So we have 18. We have 16 more to go or something like that. Do you have a fourth grader? Yeah, <laughs> I know. We should have done this in the fourth grade. We, did, we went and hit eight in two days. We did an overnight trip. My son wanted to hit all of them, but we only hit half of them. But it yeah. was for the fourth grade mission. Mm -hmm. That stuff's fun. Yeah. What else? Any other goals? Road trips and all kinds of stuff. No other sharing? Mark. There you go. Uh, I have a few, four things off of my bucket list this year. Four things off your So you already have a list put up? I do. And you're going to knock off four. Yeah. I like it. Any, what, what are some of the ones you're thinking of? Baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an anchor. Um, <laughs> not sure. Can you remember any? No. Well, okay. what, were, what were the four things on the One of them is climb half dome. So that would be hopefully one of, one of them. It's like 12 hours. Yeah. 
it's... Well, we did Mount Whitney a couple years ago, so that yeah, was... Make sure you get your passes early. Yeah. Because it's tough to get. That stuff is important to put those and do it. Okay? Yeah. I love to work, and I feel guilty when I do anything else. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you guys. I am scared to death, and I know it's the right thing to do. My son wants to go to our church to the Mexicali trip for a week and go build houses down in Mexico. And I'm like, that's nine days. That's going to screw up my loan business. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you're on your deathbed, what are the things you're going to remember? It's not I closed a bunch of loans in the month of March. You know what I mean? That's not it. So it's important to do these things. because They're big deals. Do those, have those. It makes it more fun. You know what I mean? It's awesome. Anybody else? I have. Yes. One. You guys can help me sell my new listing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a realtor going to pitch it. What's the time? Is that the timeline today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the keyword so <laughs> You just got five yeah, offers you before you know you're going to sell an instant. All right. This one's in Gold River. I don't care. 279, you don't have to go it's going to be after this meeting. I'll be there probably. There is a lockbox on the front door, but the front door is behind it. Behind the gate, it faces Gold Country Boulevard. When you come up to Promontory Point, I just assume you put the gate code in. The gate code is in the MLF, but it's not on the fly. The gate code is pound 4283. And what's your goal for how many people to come through? I'd like to have everybody. That's not specific. How many, how many people in here? She wants 20. Guys, you guys think I'm joking on this? Your brain goes to work when you quit thinking about it. Stop it. Like, you say, I'm going to have at least 15 people come through my listing broker order. Stuff just no, happens. Because the house has just been cleaned and I don't want a realtor dropping something on the floor. Take your shoes off. All right. Any other questions on goals? We'll do hot pitches at the end of the meeting. Any other goal questions? Please do this with your spouse, significant other, whoever, your kids. If they're above the age of 10 or so, I think it's worth doing with your kids. I think I, I knew my significant other real well and I did this there. I learned some fascinating things. I really, it's crazy. I learned a lot about it. So do this with them. Um, I included my team sheet. This kind of falls along the lines of the audio CD you have there. Um, I just want you guys to know from the loan officer standpoint, we hand this out to our clients. One of the biggest complaints is I never hear from my lender, I can't get a hold of them. Well, this is myself, Elisa, and Amber. These are all my employees, my team. Okay? So, Elisa on our team, her goal is to call, uh, answer the phone if somebody calls it, but also return all lead calls within 20 minutes. Okay? That's our goal that we strive for. That's her primary job. Okay? She still sets an appointment with me. I still meet with them and do all that, but she is totally lead generated for getting callbacks to make sure they get followed up with ASAP. Amber works with me now. She is full time. She works just on helping the deal get through underwriting and get it closed. You guys know that's a big deal, right? Big deal. She's not a processor. We still have a processor. This is just somebody who's on my team just to expedite it to close. All right? Summit still averages a 28 day close on average for all fundings. Okay, that's the long ones, the short ones, and everything, so we've got great turn times. But this is the team that we have assembled, put together to take care of you guys. All right? Any questions on my team or the loan side of things? Just out of curiosity, who do they work for? Do they work for the company, or do they work specifically for you? These are my employees. I pay their salary. You pay their salary. Good question. These are my peeps. And all the health insurance and all the other stuff? Company picks up the health insurance. Uh, <laughs> Todd does that work. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I apologize if this is not a very smart question, oh, but right. are you guys all local and processing underwriting? You don't send things out to Texas? Dollar? I love it. I love it. We are all local. All local. Our processing is all here. Our funding in Dr. John is about a half a mile that way. Okay. I just got off the phone with a, a realtor yesterday. Uh, this was a tough deal. I still can't believe I got it through. But I said, look, our vice president of underwriting, who handles all of underwriting, loves Rombauer. Okay, wine. I'm not a big wine guy or whatever. But it's like, and so my girlfriend happens to be a member there. It's still nice to have a little bit of old fashioned. How you doing in that? Hey, here's a bottle of Rombauer. How are the kids doing? So when I need a favor or I need to go over a scenario, I can get that with some kind of exception basis. It's nice that we have that. We're all direct. Summit loans their own money now and services them, so they're making their payments to Summit funding on about 90% of the loans. It's a big deal. I'm actually getting brought that up. We funded uh, $1.4 billion last year. This Todd guy, our president, 
it's going through the roof. That makes us, we're now Fannie Mae Direct, which means we also get a little better pricing on interest rates. So I'm telling you, we're, we're, we're not a huge big B of A yet, but we're kind of on our way there, and we get to do servicing, make their payments to us, which is a big deal. What's your so, forecast? For interest rates. I'm glad I was going to say that anyway. Tell me your next, I promise. I'm going to tell you right now, if anybody, I'm on record, interest rates are going to go up. Of course okay? they are. <laughs> Significantly. Did you guys hear? They already popped about an eighth to a quarter percent last week. Did you hear what happened? No. Real quick review. About three years ago, China says, I don't want to buy and invest in the U.S. anymore, mortgage-backed securities. You guys are no longer a good investment. China buys mortgage-backed bonds, there's a big buyer for them, interest rates stay low. China backs out, so what does the U.S. do? They start buying their own paper. So the last three years, we've been buying our own mortgage-backed securities. Okay? Why? Because they want to keep the economy going, a great way to spur it is to uh, lower interest rates. Last week, the Federal Reserve said, hey, sometime in 2013, we're going to quit buying mortgage-backed securities. We had about a quarter percent pop in rates. Okay? They haven't stopped yet, but they're going to. Now, I think the good news is they're probably going to do that because they see the economy picking up. Bad news is you're going to see interest rates go up. Please remind everybody, if they go to four and a half, that's phenomenal. Oh yeah. Okay? Yeah. We've got some maturity in the room here. I mean, you know, personally, anything in the fives, I think it's really good. So, if it doesn't go up to 18%, that's great. It'll be up to us to educate the client. To say, hey, you're still getting great so that's my interest rate for What are lending guidelines, FHA, VA, what are you looking for? How many years on the BK? How many years on the BK? BK's roughly are two years. After two years, we can do it. Um, please, some realtors like to be the loan officer and tell clients they don't qualify. Even if you think there's not a chance, let me talk to them. Sometimes we can do special exceptions on things. I have no intention of it. I just want to know what your guidelines are. Typically two years after BK. Thank you. Can be one year if a catastrophic event that's unlikely to occur again happens. You can fill in the blank for that one. VA also? You guys do VA loans? Yes. VA in-house, we do almost every loan I can think of in-house. We've got Chidap in-house, the first time home buyer, the 203K streamlined construction loan. Tammy. Can you still do that, like if you do a short sale and you're current and downsize, be able to buy a new loan? I've never <coughs> physically seen one that's closed. The guideline says if you have a short sale and there's no lates reported, that yes, you can buy again immediately. I've never seen one. But I, there's, I get advertisers from loan officers saying, uh, no seasoning required on a short sale will close your loan. Well, it's if there was no lates on the short sale. Yeah. So, take that for And then do you have the downsize? I've never heard the downsize rule. Okay. And my original question was, I can't remember if you answered this in the past, but do you do like a cash out refi? So if I buy a house cash and I want to get a loan on it, what's yep. the time period? Is there a... It used to be six months. Some of our sources will let us do it immediately. Okay. Realize I'm happy to give these answers, but there's, there's a bigger picture. In general, yes, we can do it immediately. If you own more than five properties, it's going to be a little more different. More than five mortgages, it's going to create some issues. So we are all local. We do everything in-house and fund direct. However, if we need to broker it out to another source, somebody doing something very special, then we will. Okay? Um, hard money sources, I got some of those. We don't make any money. We just pass them off. If I can't do the loan, I'll do what I can to find somebody who can if it's possible. What's the cost of hard money now? It's going to depend. You're looking at 8 to 12 percent, 2 to 5 points. So would you be able to tell us... Like if I said today, okay, I want to buy this house cash today, are you going to be able to refinance it? I want to know before I spend my cash. Beautiful. I need to pull your credit report. I need to see your tax returns. I need to see your bank statements. We need to fill out the application. And yes, we'll give you the answer. And any other lenders who tell you they don't need all that stuff are fibbing to you. Yeah. I see so many pre-approval letters, and I talk to the borrower, and they'll, oh, yeah, we did it all over the phone. I'm all, did they see your tax returns? No. They said we'll have to bring those in when we go to contract. <laughs> well, what if they write off business expenses on their tax returns and now they don't have the qualifying income they said on the phone and the approval goes to a decline? That's right. And you guys are saying, damn lenders, you guys told me it's pre-approved and they're not. There's still a lot of bad, not real thorough lenders out there. So the interest rate is just like the current interest rate, right? There's not like any higher fee by doing it, a cash out. 
Yes, there is a higher fee. There's a class I used to teach. There's like 28 points that determine your interest rate. Because like I hate it when a client or even a realtor says, well, what's the rate on this? In general, Mark, it's this. Mm -hmm. But it depends if it's a cash out refi, is it owner occupied, what's the length of the lock, how many mortgages do you have. Um, conventional interest rates are determined on your credit score. And it goes in 20 point increments from 680, 700, 720, 747, 60. So I may quote Mark a rate of 4%, I might quote a Christian a rate of 3.75 because she's got a lower interest rate. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? So all those factors come into play. Okay. I love the questions, but I'm telling you, it's still, it's, you can't really just give a quote. You can say in general. In general. Yeah, FHA why? started about a year ago. Now they have a little different pricing based on credit score. Chris, you have a flyer based on what you, what you guys can do for us? A what? A flyer that shows kind of what you do, what loans you guys do. I know nothing about you, so. Me, me neither. <laughs> Sorry to say. Oh, I appreciate you guys saying I'll give you a matrix flyer. We kind of do everything. Is that generic or specific? <laughs> generic. You're going to be specific. Yeah, I just thought of class on Specific ideas of, you know, I will put a flyer out. I will get you a flyer. Programs. Because when you FHABA, it's all done in house. Yes. I meet a lot of clients that have that have credit issues, and they always ask me, "Who can I go to to clean up my credit?" We know. Yeah, that's it. Come here Is first. Is there a company that does that? Yes, yeah. there's several of them. Blue Water. Um, I bounced around a little bit. I would say lately, I love a company called Blue Water Credit. Blue Water Credit. Yeah. They fixed a couple of loans for me that were declines, and they got involved. A real common one, guys. Somebody has a short sale, and the credit bureau is reported as a foreclosure. 